2015 it's almost over, so in this episode of Cultura Latina, we're having different expressions of culture in Latin America. <laughs> The Peruvian capital has an incredible movement of street artists that seem to be losing their spaces and murals because of political reasons. Take a look at their story. Olfer Leonardo is a Peruvian artist who has worked murals in seven Latin American countries. He explains the meaning of one of his murals in downtown Lima. Hay dos imágenes grandes que se, enfren, que, que se miran. Eh, una es el, los Aguajún, la comunidad nativa que fue sacrificada, bueno, que aún sigue resistiendo por la defensa de su tierra, y la otra perso personaje es la Yacumama, que está soplando. La Yacumama es la madre de la selva. However, the mayor of Lima has ordered the elimination of all murals in the city center, and the removal has already started. The murals include those who were created as part of the Latin American festival organized by graffiti artist Entes. Lo que más fastidia en realidad es el esfuerzo que se hace de gestión, ¿no? Porque nosotros somos gestores culturales jóvenes que para conseguir que una ciudad en el centro de Lima aperture en espacio para para que vengan artistas internacionales. According to a member of the city council in the opposition, the removal of the murals is a political move to undo the work of the previous mayor without consideration for the value of public displays of art. Ya esto pues colinda con lo ridículo porque este por un lado se está borrando arte urbano con pintura del partido político del alcalde y además estamos defendiendo el borrado de arte que a todas luces y que viendo las experiencias internacionales suman y le dan valor al centro histórico de la ciudad de Lima. Critics also argue that murals in open spaces are a smart way to regain public places, making the city friendlier and art more accessible to the general public. But the mayor has declared he will not change his decision. Rael Mora, Telesur, Lima. Located in an endangered area in Mexico City, the recently opened Photo Museum seeks to promote the analysis of the Mexican reality to different workshops, forums and exhibitions around the image. Take a look. With 200 visual producers, 398 photographs, and 86 videos, this may look like a high-end gallery, but in fact, it is Mexico City's newly inaugurated photo museum. Located in a working-class neighborhood, the Cuatro Caminos Museum seeks to do more than exhibit photos. Crear este espacio eh, fue con la intención de crear un espacio de educación, fundamentalmente de educación, a través de exhibición de exposiciones, de talleres, de conferencias, de eventos, masterclass, de todo lo que tiene que ver alrededor de la imagen. With entry costing at about $1.77 and half that for students, the museum, founded by the well-known contemporary photographer Pedro Meyer, also seeks to celebrate the ever-evolving work of Mexico's visual producers. O sea, es la importancia que le daría que finalmente hay maneras de conocer la historia o maneras de interpretar la realidad y finalmente la fotografía es una de ellas. One tendency the curators realized when organizing the inaugural exhibit was the underlying theme of violence in Mexico, called the State of Things, the collection of work graphically expresses the country's ongoing human rights crisis. The proposal of one participating photographer is to confront the apparent normalcy of violence in the collective minds. Entonces, ha sido un público que se ha educado visualmente para consumir este tipo de imágenes desde hace muchos años. Lo que yo quiero hacer con mis fotografías es una reflexión en torno a la violencia. Meanwhile, another of the authors believes that one of the fundamental roles of social photography is to provoke reflection and action, to communicate ideas through the image. El sentimiento que encapsula esa foto es tan fuerte que pues obviamente no solo se va a quedar en el lugar que la tomaron, o sea, toda la gente le va a hacer caso precisamente por eso, por toda la explosión de, de, de acción y sentimiento. With the ever-proliferation of the consumption and production of images through new technologies, the organizers of the Cuatro Caminos Museum hope to maintain a relevant node of reflection and analysis of not just images, but of their meanings and interpretations. Clayton Cantelo Sur, Mexico City. And last but not least, we have a mouth-watering delicacy from Bolivia. It's the amazing yama meat that, according to specialists and doctors, is way healthier than beef and other processed meats. Enjoy! Forget beef, this is what carnivores should be switching to, yama meat. Bolivia's health ministry says it's a healthier alternative to red meat and it's becoming more popular since the World Health Organization warned that processed and red meats probably causes cancer. 
but in Bolivia they've always been partial to llama and doctors say that's for a good reason. Lo otro positivo de la carne de llama es de que tiene bajo contenido de grasas, entonces por ende al, al ser ingerida eh, tiene men menor aporte de colesterol al, al sistema, digamos al cuerpo humano, ¿no? Llamas native to the Andean region are mostly known for their soft shaggy wool, but recently they're arguably becoming more famous for their protein-rich, low-fat meat. And suddenly llama meat is appearing on menus everywhere all over Bolivia. Traditionally, llama meat was just eaten by indigenous Bolivians since pre-Columbian times. Now, because of growing demand from both tourists and locals, many high-end restaurants have started serving the meat, and they say diners can't get enough of it. This French restaurant in La Paz says its two llama dishes are so popular they sometimes struggle to meet demand. Este plato ha sido, bueno, está siendo bastante popular, más que nada por las personas de afuera, de los extranjeros que les encanta la carne de llama, tanto como la carne de cordero. Bolivian llama meat has become so fashionable that it's even been exported. I know that from our producers, they are exporting it to Germany and to Europe because it's a, it's a, it's a healthy meat, right? And uh, they, they, they export it there. It's commonly used by older people because there is low fat, there, there's not so much carbs in the meat. Bolivia is hoping that this recent boom in Yama is not just a flash in the pan and that consumers will continue to choose it as a healthier option to beef. But despite its many benefits, the health ministry still warns that like most meats, it should be eaten in moderation. Dimitri O'Donnell, Telesur, La Paz. That was great, right? I hope you enjoyed this roundup. I expect you again next week for another amazing taste of Latin American culture. See you then. Thank you.